Good afternoon. Uh, welcome. Welcome to all of you, family and friends of Mel Sturmel. Um, even though we gather with some sadness today and some emptiness in our hearts, we gather around God's Word uh, with people we love to be reassured and to find strength for this time. We were planning on leaving the casket open. I don't know. Do we want to leave it open or close it? I know Lynn can't see me, so. <laughs> Should we close it up? Okay. It's well, we can open up again afterwards. So, yeah, Kevin, if you could come and close it, that'd probably be a good idea for the service. I asked him if there was a partial, and he said it's all or nothing. So, sorry. <laughs> Can't close it halfway or anything. So. We'll open it up again at the end, Kevin. Okay, thank you. The service we're using today for the Christian funeral is printed in the worship guide and it's also going to be on the screen as well. Um, depending on what generation you're from, some of this may be very familiar, some of it may be very unfamiliar. Uh, Mel insisted that we use the old language of the King James for his funeral service. And so honoring his wishes today, there will be a lot of these and those. We will begin then in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. We have come together to seek God's comfort in our sorrow, and to rejoice in the promise of the resurrection. Grace and peace to you from God our Father, and from our Lord Jesus Christ, who said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, you wept at the grave of your friend Lazarus, and you consoled Mary and Martha in their distress. Draw near to us who mourn for Melvin Sturmel, and dry the tears of all who weep. Calm our troubled hearts, dispel our doubts and fears, and lead us to praise you for having brought him to faith. In your rising from the dead, you conquered death and opened the gates to eternal life. Strengthen us with your word and lead us through this earthly life until at last we are united with you and all the saints in glory everlasting. Amen. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me, in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, 
world without end. Amen. Sing our first hymn for today, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. In the next section, the words of resurrection comfort I invite you to join me in the parts labeled C for congregation. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who comforteth us all in our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble, by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. The Apostle Paul writes to the Romans, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Jesus gives us this comfort. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Thanks be to God. He gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. 
When Christ, who is our life, appears, then we also will appear with him in glory. We will be before the throne of God, and serve him day and night in his temple. Never again will we hunger, never again will we thirst. For the Lamb at the center of the throne will be our shepherd. He will lead us to springs of living water. God of all grace, you sent your Son, Jesus, to destroy the power of death and to open the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Make us certain that because he lives, we too shall live. Comfort us with your promise that neither death nor life, nor angels nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature, shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. First lesson from the Old Testament, another one of the Psalms, Psalm 121, reminding us that the Lord watches over you. The Lord watches over you with the same loving care and concern that he watched over Mel throughout his life. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills, from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. This is God's word. John chapter 14, 1 through 6 from the Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ, Jesus meeting with his disciples the night before he died, encouraging them that he is going to prepare a place for them. He has prepared a place for us by suffering on the cross to pay for our sins, by rising from the grave triumphantly over death. Jesus says, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Grace, mercy, and peace are yours in abundance through the knowledge of God and of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Focus our attention now on God's word from the Revelation to John, chapter 5, verses 11 through 13. And I beheld, and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne and the beasts and the elders, And the number of them was ten thousand times ten thousand, and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain, to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. And every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea, 
and all that are in them, heard I saying, Blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb forever and ever. This is God's word. Christian friends, especially you, Mel's family, not quite sure how to put into the words how I want to start this out today, but I'm thinking about different sounds, comparing different sounds. For example, let's start out with cars, since you know those so well. Um, The sound of a Toyota Prius, which probably isn't much of a sound at all, right? Because it's a hybrid, it doesn't really have a major engine to it like we think of a a car engine, a classic car engine. Now compare that to Plymouth Roadrunner, quite a difference, right? Okay, quite a difference. Uh, But even a Plymouth Roadrunner, if you put it on the starting line of a NASCAR race, it's going to get drowned out with all the engines, isn't it? A lot of loud noises. You know, the comparison from the, the smallest or the quietest to the, to the loudest. And what a difference there is. And certainly Mel would have known the difference in those sounds. Or, or take trains, for example. You get your, you know, your model trains. We had the end gauge when I was growing up because, probably because they were cheaper and we didn't have a whole lot of room at the house with seven kids. But... Um, and you get the H-O and the O and the bigger ones. But then you compare that to a, a diesel locomotive pulling 100 box cars. There's a different sound there. Or the sound of a, a steam engine. You know, the chug, chug, chug of the steam engine. Mel would know the difference between those sounds, wouldn't he? Let's think about the difference in the sound of worship. We've got a small gathering here today. We sing... Uh, one hymn already, we had our spoken responses, and you know, we praise God together here today for his blessings. We've had bigger services here at Woodlawn for Easter and Christmas Eve when church has been full and there's trumpets and the organ is playing loud, and you know, those are, it's a different sound, isn't it? And then maybe you go to some, some big service in an arena like the Mecca where, where Mel worked, and an even bigger sound. But now think about heaven and the sound of the angels praising God and, and everybody, all the saints in glory praising God forever and ever and ever. Mel can tell the difference, I think. We don't know what he's hearing right now. So we might wonder to ourselves, how does it sound, Mel? What's it like? context of Revelation chapter 5, the Apostle John received this revelation from Jesus Christ. At the time, he was an old man living in exile on an island. He had been one of the leaders and and the main teachers of the church for decades. And at that point in history, the Romans were starting to worry more about the growing Christian church, the influence that the message of Jesus Christ was having. And they stepped up their persecution of Christians. So in a sense, they tried to isolate John, one of the main leaders of the church, so that he couldn't do much damage. It was while he was in exile on this island called Patmos that Jesus showed John some amazing visions. John saw dramatic scenes that described the the pain and the suffering that the followers of Jesus Christ would have to endure before he came again at the end of time. But Jesus Christ also showed John some amazing visions of heaven. Pictures of heaven to reinforce the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. And in heaven, John saw massive crowds of people. In the ancient Greek language, the biggest number you had to work with was was a thousand. So you got multiples of thousands here, thousands upon thousands. And These crowds are praising God. And it says they're saying their praises, but we often think of this kind of a setting as singing praises to God. It's hard to imagine what it sounds like. Does it sound like a symphony? 
Does it sound like a, a big band or a rock concert or smooth jazz that Mel was so fond of? We don't know what it sounds like, but there's music in heaven. There's praising of God. And I can imagine Mel just kind of sitting back and enjoying the sound, enjoying the music, filling the room where our Almighty Father in heaven has his throne and the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, sits at his right hand and the Holy Ghost, one God in three persons, now and forever. How does it sound? A loud voice, worthy is the Lamb that was slain. This time of year in our church services, we talk about John the Baptist coming and preparing the way for Jesus Christ to come and do his ministry, to do his work as our Savior. John the Baptist pointed out Jesus Christ as the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And we sing to the Lamb of God before we take Holy Communion in church, asking him to have mercy on us to grant us his peace. Why the song of praise to the Lamb? Well, in the Old Testament, when God gave his, his laws to his people for worship, um, part of that was the, the sacrifices. And one of the sacrifices was you, you know, the sin offering, and you'd bring the animal like a lamb, and, and you'd present it to God after you had sinned. And the lamb would be sacrificed in place of the person a substitute. And by that sacrifice of that lamb, God was telling that person, your sins are forgiven. Jesus Christ was sacrificed as the lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. One time, sacrificed in, in place of the entire world, paid for everyone's sin for all time. We're all sinners, but by the sacrifice of the Son of God, every sin has been paid for. He paid the price for you and me. What, what we deserved, he suffered for us. And he did this to give us peace. Peace that's going to last forever. Peace from our guilt. Peace so that we can live out of thanks and praise to God every day. And that's what we want to do. We want to use our lives as citizens of Christ's kingdom to praise and thanks, thank God for all that he does for us, all that he has done for us, and, and use our gifts and abilities to serve God and to serve the people around us. Mel had a lot of wonderful gifts, didn't he? He used to joke a lot about wheeling and dealing and getting parts and equipment at discount. Loved to tinker with all kinds of different things. Kind of reminds me of one of my brothers that I would build model airplanes and cars and tanks and stuff with when I was a kid. Um, he worked on our cars at home and took a course in VCR repair and, you know, spent a lot of time listening to his transistor radio. Always picking stuff up at rummage sales and, and uh, you know, discount stores and used stores. You know, fix it up, use it, it's still good, right? When you have those kinds of interests, and a wide variety of interests that Mel had, it can be easy to collect a lot of stuff. Stuff that uh, some people might call treasures. Um, other people would probably just call junk, right? But the stuff of earth pales in comparison to the stuff of heaven. Worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. It's hard to understand what the riches of heaven are like. We, we understand things in such a material, tangible way. What are the riches of heaven that Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, has in his possession? It's hard to imagine, but certainly it's the people that he saved as part of it, right? The perfect life that he gives us. It's all about them. It's all about him ruling over us for our good, for our blessing, not just in our lives here and now to help us through the day, but forever. And everybody joins in the chorus of praise to God here and to the Lamb. You've got the angels. Um, he mentions the beasts. And if you look at the context of Revelation, that's probably a kind of angel as well. Um, the elders, the ancient patriarchs, the 12 sons of, of Israel, and the, 
the 12 apostles. You got the creatures in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea. Well, Mel will be happy about that, right? He, he loved animals. God made the animals. The animals praised God too. Everybody focused on the Lamb and how he is our Savior. How does it sound? It's got to be absolutely amazing. Is Mel hearing God's praises, standing next to Jackie, your mom and grandma, his wife of 50 years, next to his family and and all the saints of, of all time, people of God who have been washed in the waters of baptism, people who have been made pure and clean with the the spotless blood of Jesus Christ. It's hard to imagine it, isn't it? But if we start with our small gathering today and add more and more people and more and more songs of praise and it gets louder and louder and louder, fills the whole earth and beyond, maybe we can get a taste of what perfect praise in heaven is like. Perfect praise in heaven, that place where there's no sickness anymore, where there's no disobeying God and going against his will, where there's no, no death, no anger, no frustration, no conflict, but there's peace and there's health and there's strength and there's joy and there's perfect harmony with God and with each other. And that's all because of the Lamb. Blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb forever and ever. I don't know, it, to me it's easier to picture Mel maybe back in the sound booth in heaven, just kind of watching it all happen, listening carefully, adjusting the levels maybe, but certainly he's adding his voice to the praise as well. My memory might be faulty, but I think it was, I think it was Mel who said Jackie thought that three verses of each hymn was enough. That was long enough for each of the hymns we would sing. So actually there were four verses for each of these hymns. I cut them down to three today in memory of Jackie. Um, Mel liked to praise God in his own way, didn't he? With his own voice. He, he knew he was a sinner. He knew his failures. He knew his weaknesses. And we get caught up in those so badly sometimes, don't we? He had his share of frustrations with himself and others, and he could be pretty outspoken. But he relied on the mercy of God, too, and, and knew he needed his Savior. He loved to joke around and get his jabs in. Pastor Knazer mentioned how in our visits with Mel, especially these last few years, when he was considered more of a shut-in, conversations would jump around from topic to topic to topic because he was interested in so many different things. Could be trains or cars. Could also be biblical archaeology, messianic Jews, secret societies. Even in his 80s, he still was a kid at heart, full of mischief, full of curiosity. And of course, he talked about his family all the time. He loved you. He was proud of you. He worried about you. He was concerned. And your life and and your interests that you have now, your hobbies, are always going to be a direct connection to him throughout your life and probably for generations to come. God was gracious to Mel. He was brought up in a Christian home. Baptized, actually, at Christ Lutheran, where Jackie was from. Confirmed at Ascension Lutheran. Married at Christ Lutheran, where all of his children were baptized. But then Woodlawn became home. The membership sheet I have was signed on August 28, 1974. So this was part of his life for about 45 years. And he was our audio technician for many years here at church and hooked up with some good equipment uh, through Select Sound. We've made some changes and additions recently, as you can tell, my headset and the screens here. And Mel wanted to know what was going on. He wanted to be part of it, which was perfectly natural because he had put his heart and soul into it for so many years. Unfortunately, because of COVID and, and visiting restrictions, I hadn't actually seen Mel in months. Um, we had talked about trying to set up a video chat at some point, but we never got that going. 
One of the last good conversations I had with him on the phone was the day after Thanksgiving. As usual, we talked about a lot of different things. He missed receiving the Lord's Supper, though. That was something that was on his mind and on his heart. He was hungering for that very personal application of God's forgiveness in the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Mel enjoyed the life God gave him, but it became a lot more difficult. After his heart was broken, when Jackie died, And then he fell and hurt his knee, and he was never the same after that. His strength and his mobility started going away. Without Jackie, he didn't have enough fight in him to push and to push to get stronger. He longed for heaven. He longed to hear what here on earth we never get to hear clearly. He longed to hear this. Worthy is the Lamb that was slain. To receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. Blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb forever and ever. Mel was part of a lot of church services here at Woodlawn. And he was part of a lot of events at places like the Mecca. Now, Along with Jackie, he's part of a great gathering of saints in heaven who praise God forever. How does it sound? I bet it's just too amazing for our earthly words. Through Jesus Christ, Mel now gets to enjoy heaven forever, and he waits for that day when we will rise from the dead and everything will be made new when Jesus comes again. I pray the good news of your Savior, Jesus Christ, will give you strength today and keep you hopeful for the future, knowing that you have a Savior also. I pray that he will encourage you and give you perseverance. Thank God for his blessings that in this life come and go all too quickly. But there's even better blessings. Even better blessings when God will reunite you with Mel and Jackie And you get to hear what they hear, the music of heaven and the praises of God and the Lamb forever and ever. God's peace to you. Amen. Now God's peace, which goes beyond our understanding, will guard and keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Join together in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue with the next hymn, Be Still, My Soul.
Almighty God, we praise you for the great company of saints who have finished their lives in faith and now rest from their labors. We remember especially our loved one, Melvin Sturmel, whom you have redeemed by the blood of your Son and received as your dear child through holy baptism. We thank you for giving him to us as a companion on our earthly pilgrimage. In your compassion, comfort all who are sad in this hour. Lord, in your mercy. We praise you for your love in Christ, which sustains us in life and death. In our earthly sorrows, help us find strength in the fellowship of the church, joy in the forgiveness of sins, and hope in the resurrection to eternal life. Lord, in your mercy. You do not leave us comfortless, but strengthen and care for us through your word and sacrament. You give us family, friends, and neighbors to help when there is loneliness now and in the days to come. Brighten our future with a firm trust in your promises and care. Lord, in your mercy, remove our fears and make us bold to pray with confidence as our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now the Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. This ends our funeral service here at church. Uh, A little bit later this afternoon, we will be proceeding to Wisconsin Memorial Park for the burial. Um, At this time, we'll open up the casket again, and uh, Lee and Mitchell will usher people forward to pay their last respects. 